hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at how we can do event-based development so what is event-based development to give you a simple example let's just say if you are creating a user registration okay and in your application once the user registers you have the requirement to put that user in your crm you have a requirement that you put that user in your analytics tool so on and so forth right now think of it one way is that inside your registration controller you have the insert and then you have you no know, one uh, code which takes care of submitting the user into the crm then there is a separate code which is responsible for pushing it to the analytics so on and so forth right but then you can even choose to queue them up so that they are you know happening in parallel but then your controller is getting bloated right you may even put it inside the service and say that, okay, my controller is slim, but then your service is growing. But if you think of it in a true pluggable architecture, what do you want to do? You want to say that my user got registered, right? And then any part of your application who are really concerned with the registration of the user would say, okay, if your user got registered, I have something to do about it, right? So for example, the CRM module of our application will say, hey, I want that user information because I want to process it. Similarly, maybe the mix panel or the analytics part of it, right? Not mix panel really, but yes, the analytics module of your application says, hey, I also want the user object because I want to process it, correct? So this is a way of building an architecture where you are really decoupling the requirements so tomorrow if your analytics module is taken off you don't need to make any changes you don't need to change your controller code because the event listener just went away right so that's what is the beauty of event-based architecture and today in this video i'm going to show you how you can implement this in nsjs but before you do that if you like this video then i would request you to click on the thumbs up icon and yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. So let's get started now. So in our application, we have this quiz create, but let's just say we want to create a new controller, which handles the response of a user when he is answering a question. So let's get started and first create that controller. So I'll have this thing inside my, you know, source modules, quiz controllers i'll create a controller called response controller and let's just steal a little bit of code from quiz controller okay i have a lot of things over here uh, maybe i'll just you know, reference it so what do we have export class response controller because this is a controller we will need to add the decorator okay and we are talking about one url or one route which is going to handle the uh, response right so a sync something like this right and we'll do a post like so and because this is a controller i'll go inside my quiz module and i'll add that entry over here okay what else i think i need to add a few decorators for our swagger to detect this as well so why don't we go over here i need an api tag i'll copy that then i need a bearer token but to keep things simple i'll not add that right now otherwise i'll have to do everything with that token let's just keep it simple and now if i hit refresh on swagger i have response let's just console a little bit over here so in here let's just return a simple response something like message okay maybe additionally what we are doing is just making an insert into our table of response with basic parameters okay and that's about it and then what we want to do is let's just say in this particular api we have our code to insert data into the response table right and then we raise an event so how do we raise an event let's go to the nest documentation so that you know you are also aware of how things are done so I'll go to docs.nestjs.com over here. I think there is inside the techniques, we have events, right? So if you see what nest.js does, it uses the event 
emitter to package and there's a wrapper around it which we will be using so let's quickly install that i'll go to my terminal and add this once this is done what do we have in here so we are configuring the app module with this which is which is great okay it's a very simple configuration and then we have wildcards delimiter all of them these are defaults and if i want i can change st certain stuff i'm not going to do that i think the basic thing which i want to do is event editor module for root i'll have to configure that so let's first do that the module has been installed i'll go to my app.module.ts over here event module right this is from nest event emitter yes for root and that's about it i think that should be enough for us to get started with let's see let's see what the documentation says yes this is fine i'll keep everything uh, default okay dispatching events so to dispatch that is fire an event we inject this and then we can call this thing so why don't we go ahead and do that first of all if i make a query or rather a request to this i get my message which is fine nothing on the console let us go over here and say console log this is inside the controller something like this okay and then as i said we need to inject the event emitter so constructor this is part of our dependency injection if you're not aware of it then nestjs uses constructor to inject different kinds of services that we're using if you're not already familiar with this i would su strongly suggest that you look at my previous videos so that you get a good sense of this so event emitter event emitter 2 i think that's what we are going to inject if i'm not wrong let's see yep and with this so let's say our insert happened and then we are raising an event so this dot event emitter dot emit so the first thing is going to be a string which is the name of the event so i'll just say what um response submitted something like this and i can now send any payload okay now i can do something like user id one and what option id four i think this should be enough for me to say that okay option uh, belongs to this particular question so get fetch that question and we will also be able to fetch all the options for that question and then we can do our business logic right so we generally will get everything but then we have this event and let's just say how do we handle this first of all so inside here we have services over here let's just say our quiz service is going to handle this okay i can create an a response actually i should do that let's quickly do that response service.ts okay so this is injectable because this is here i should go into my quiz module and inside this i'll do response service okay nothing is breaking so far and now i will show you how the listener works so we have this event which got emitted right now to listen to an event we have this decorator okay so inside our response service let's just say on event from the event emitter we'll do where is our response controller response submitted go to our service file sorry about this confusion so we have controller i'll remove the quiz service yes so response controller and response service i'll go inside the service do this handle response submitted okay or maybe check quiz completed something like that okay we'll get a payload over here and why don't we do 
console.log quiz completed check and we do a payload so with this what are we doing we get our request over here we console this then we emit an event response service ideally this should get triggered so let's see go to swagger hit this so as you can see this is inside the controller got printed in our console why because obviously that one was straightforward and you know, this this needs to come right but then we even we emitted an event okay there is no console over here but this service this console came in to our terminal and we are also seeing the payload so this is interesting right even just to give you an illustrative example if i have something like um how do you say so let's just say check quiz complete completed is a function which is inside our quiz service okay i'll import this thing on event response submitted is something which is coming from here whereas handle if response is correct is a function which is inside the response service so we will still have the payload and i will obviously need to copy this and console.log i'll say this is going to be name of the function and then the payload so let's try once more okay the second one didn't happen for some reason let me see have i saved everything quiz service i haven't that's the reason i think okay so far so good go to swagger and yes you can see i am getting both the consoles so this is really the power of event based thing so tomorrow if i really need to disable the entire response service right i can just delete it and my controller has uh, sorry if i if i although it's a bad example i i cannot remove the quiz but you know if you have any module which is analytics and you know that module is listening to this event which is a completely different independent entity you have no code changes suddenly because your controller is not really aware of it okay so yeah, that is the beauty but now i would like to in improve certain things in here okay this response submitted as you can see is getting repeated quite a few times and if i make a, a slight typo this is not going to work and believe me this will become very difficult to debug so ideally we would like to have some constants for this so what i will do is now personally i feel the constants should go over here so i'll have a constants on c o n s t a n t s constants slash event constant oops dot ts constants they will be multiple okay i'll create this file and i'll have export constant events equals an object so we have what response submitted which is equal to why don't we copy this okay like so you can have multiple i think this is not equal to but this right now what i will do over here is actually instead of these i can do <clears throat> this is events so events dot response submitted with this i will not easily go wrong on the name of the event that's the only advantage that i have okay but that's a big advantage believe me because now you cannot go wrong and you can exactly see what is the name of the event okay nothing changes if i go to swagger can you see i'm still finding those two um, consoles from the two event subscribe uh, eventlessness so the code is working and over here one small development improvement again is this payload right ideally you should do something like a class if you see the documentation example right i didn't want to over complicate things initially but order created event and you pass certain things over here i feel this is a better approach because then 
you can define the type of payload that we are expecting. Okay, so let's get that done as well. So I'll go to quiz and I'll create events. I mean a folder called events and inside that I'll have response event uh, response add event.ts. Okay, and I'll export a class called response add. And in this I'll have two properties. We have user ID and we have option ID. OPT yes, like this. So what now I can do is over here, new response add. I think I should do response add event. That will be better. Feels more readable, right? Response add event something like this and you'll have user id oops why this is where is this coming from this is fine let me maybe uh do somehow this is how can i type in this i can do user id equals one option id equals 33 something like that and then over here I can say this is of type response add event. Okay, so payload dot yes, I get this, which is fine. And even inside quiz service, I'll do event first of all dot this. Okay, do that. And I'll also type in this to response add event. And obviously, now I will start getting the type hints. This is fine. The only thing is, I, I'm still a little iffy about this. Uh, maybe I can do something like constant payload equals new uh, response add event payload dot user ID equals one option ID equals 33, something like this. And then I'll do payload. But come to think of it, what is the advantage of it? Hmm. I think generally both works. Um, I'm creating a new instance of this and I'm passing that two things and then I'm you know passing that as the payload, right? Which which is also fine. I don't see there any difference, but yes, what I had done previously, which was like this, right? That is also fine. The only thing is now the argument is not able to understand it so this is a better approach i would say because this payload understands what what is being you know coming to it and what is being coming over here in the services is obviously type hinted so they understand what is the data that is coming as argument okay so that's about it guys that's how we use events in our nestjs application and create a scalable architecture where one component is not or a one module is not really dependent on other but rather our application is just emitting events saying this is something which happened in our application and there are side effects which are being you know covered by the services if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel